Hey bike farmers, welcome back. As you'll see behind me, got some new digs. These are actually kind of old digs, but new digs. So this is how I had Gibbs Bike Shop, my brick and mortar shop, set up from day one. And then I moved it all uh, across the room and I've been using the back shop to film all my videos for the last couple of years, I suppose. I have spent the last couple of days building this wonderful tool board and kind of redoing my workbench and my setup and I'm really excited to get going and working on it. While I was finishing up the tool board this morning, a nice older gentleman came in and said, hey, I was just over at the thrift shop and I found this bike and I thought, huh, maybe I need to start getting some exercise. And he test rode it around the parking lot and thought it felt good enough to buy. And he brought it to me to just check it over. It just needs a little grease on the chain as they say. Um, this bike is an older mongoose. Uh, it's not one of the modern ones. I mean, it's not the nicest bike in the world. It's not anything fancy, but it sure is good enough to serve this guy's purposes. So I said, you know what? Uh, clean everything, lube everything and adjust it. Do those things to it and you're gonna have a perfectly serviceable bicycle that I think will serve your purposes. So that's what we're gonna do today. I think this thing can be saved. I don't know for sure. Who knows what we're gonna find? So let's get started. Okay, per the huge, we're gonna pop the wheels off first thing. I'm just gonna feel this one here. Hub feels okay, don't have to worry about that. Yeah, this is definitely an entry level bicycle, but I don't think it was born. Yeah, it was born at, in Bay City, Michigan. It was born at a bike shop. It's got a bike shop sticker on it, so. We can work with that. Um, yeah. I suppose the guy doesn't need this little friendship bracelet on the handlebars. Since he bought it used, I can pretty much guarantee that didn't come from one of his grandkids. Um, I think what I'll do right away is just uh, kind of get started on polishing. Looks to be mostly dust. So I'm just gonna start with the furniture polish right off of the gates here. I'm gonna do the whole bike. Should create a nice little shine. So I'm gonna loosen all the cables. All I did there is push the derailleur in a little bit, create enough slack to get that piece of housing out. And then the whole rear cable will come out. And you can kind of do the same with the front. Loosen your cable. And I'm just pulling the front derailleur out. Then you can pull that piece of housing right out of the cable stops. Your rear brake is already disconnected, so that's got enough slack in it. Now all your cables are Nice and loosey goosey, flippity floppity. And then you can just start systematically going through and lubing all your cables. And I would say that this step of lubing cables like this is the number one biggest improvement you make to a bike when you tune it up. The three main steps are cleaning, 
lubricating and adjusting. And in a way, this is the first two. It's cleaning and lubricating. But sometimes you actually have to clean the cables. Sometimes you have to replace them, but not always. Um, I can tell this one has never had its cables lubed before. This is, these are dry as a bone. Oh, I didn't get the... I didn't get this piece of housing in the right home. This one wants to be in the middle set of stops. And the front is on the outside. a little different but essentially the same thing it's just harder to get enough slack to really work it like that but with the front we just kind of pull a little slack there and then hopefully we can get enough access to drip lube down into the cable into the housing you just kind of work it manually and then don't forget to work the bottom here too get a little in the noodle and do both sides of the noodle oh yeah feels good as new I'm gonna hurt a little bit of squeaking up in the brake pivots it's always a good idea to get some lube in there Okay, now all your cables are lubed. Everything feels really good. So this angle is a little different than you're used to seeing. And the bench is not as filthy. But So this axle here has quite a bit of filth on it. So I'm gonna take a finish line citrus degreaser Give it a good soak. And then I floss. And that cleans up that axle. And then the hub here too. Okay. I'm switching rags, getting one that's not quite as filthy as that one. That was a really filthy one because I was cleaning something super filthy. I switch rags a lot. I have like, you know, different colored rags. Depending on how filthy the job is. And I wipe off every single spoke. Sometimes I'll just take a little bit of degreaser and put it right on the rag like that. And then that helps to polish spokes. Sometimes the, I use Dawn Power Wash or even sometimes it's just the Behold or furniture polish or whatever you get. I like the cheap stuff with the furniture polish. It seems to um, stay wet. It doesn't dry real fast. Like Pledge, name brand Pledge seems to well, it comes out faster. It's like they want you to use more. I don't know. I like the cheap stuff. I don't know. It's probably just more water, right? But it leaves a real shiny wax. 
And you saw what it did to that frame. It really shined it up. And I've got, this is some actual, like, I don't even, I think it's finish line bike wash in this bottle, but it doesn't, it doesn't stay wet. I don't know, it must have a drying agent in it of some sort, but any wet rag is gonna clean the filth off of what you're rubbing. So I don't care a whole lot. I don't have power wash on my bench from the move. I'm gonna have to go get one. Cause that's what I like the best is the Dawn power wash. For actual like light degreasing and cleaning of things like wheels. Power, Dawn power wash works really, really well. It's a nice new discovery. You can get it at Costco for pretty cheap. So that's how I clean a wheel, you know. You can see this uh, valve stem here. This valve stem is crooked. So we're gonna have to do something about that. I don't have my compressed air set up yet. But I'm gonna let the air out of it here. I kind of loosen up the whole tire so it'll move on the rim too. And once I get it straight, there it is. Pull it out and I'm gonna put a bunch of air in there. I gotta run over to my compressor though. Okay. Now I got air in the tires. Whenever I have nuts on my axles, I like to take a little grease and put it on the threads. These did have a little bit of grease on them, but it's always a good idea to add a little bit more because I'm really going to crank down on those. We don't want that loosening up. A little bit of a wobble to the wheel here. See if I can't get you a little close up. You can see it there, right? So that seems to be the main spot. I'm going to loosen this one a little. I'm going to tighten this one a little. And I just kind of keep going around. Loosen that one. Tighten that one. Okay, push that out of the way. Can loosen that spoke. Tighten that one. So I'm loosening the spokes that are connecting to the right hub flange. Loosening, because it's connecting to the right, and that'll move it over there to the left. Okay, I'm gonna loosen that one a little. So I'm loosening it and then backing it off a little bit. I can't remember what they call that, like a, it's like a, a wound, something like that. The, the spoke twists. You know, not just the nipple. So you do that and then that relieves the pressure. It's just a little subtle movement. Okay, and then, so that was, I was working this side, the rim. Now I'm gonna work the other side. And I'm looking over here and you can't see it, but I just kind of see how bad it's touching. It's not bad at all. And I'm just gonna make real subtle little adjustments to this side and that's really good yeah this is really close Good enough for this bike. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the front wheel.
Hard to believe we're already putting the wheels back on it. It's also hard to believe. So far, this whole tune-up has been a 15 millimeter wrench and a spoke wrench. Two tools so far. Well, okay. We used a rag. did not go on like it came off so it's either me or the bike shop so I'm just loosening one side of the axle the drive side in this case and then I'm, I'm pushing up with my right leg down here I'm pulling over with my left hand which is forcing this axle all the way up into the dropouts Sometimes when you really crank down on it like that, it'll, um, if this lock washer isn't really locking, the whole axle will slide in the dropout. And then you gotta do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna loosen the axle nut, and then with this hand, I'm pushing against the tire back here. And that helps the axles get seated in the dropout. And, well, the brakes are straight, but this brake pad is off. So I think it was wrong from the beginning because that's in there right now. Everything's seated just fine. Reconnect the front brake. Oh my God, it feels really good. And then the rear brake. Now, the rear brake, it's totally rubbing, so that wheel's not gonna spin. Usually this is how I do it. I'm using my index finger under the pad, and then this can adjust the angle of things. And you get it. So it's not rubbing on the tire and not gonna slip underneath the rim and it's hitting the brake track pad track pad brake surface what do you call that sidewall all right okay so only pulling on one side i'm going to tighten increase tension on this side actually i haven't lubed these pivots yet either. So if you lube the pivots, then everything will move smoothly. I lube the pivots and then I lube the springs behind it. Then you kind of wiggle things around. Let, let the lube get in there and then work it a little bit. And I got a lot of threads showing on this side, so that's why I'm tightening. There we go. Let's 
rubbing on that tire a little bit. Make a small tweak to the pad angle. Okay, I'm gonna let a little out. Add a little to this side. Pretty low tension system, so can add a little to both sides and break, just bring the tension of the whole brake system up. There, that looks pretty good, huh? Whew, it's a noisy drivetrain. Uh, I'm gonna grab five millimeter here. Loosen my anchor bolt. A smidge. Everything on this bike is super dry. So I'm gonna drop a little tri-flow in there. It'll help things out. So we don't get ourselves into trouble and break something. All right. All right, if you see here, things are pretty rusty. Are they not? Most people would get scared by that, but not me. Doesn't bother me a whole lot on a bike like this. I think we're just fine. We're gonna work with it. Okay. use way too much. Get the front here. Okay. And then squirt a little on the back and the front of the freewheel. Grab one of your filthy rags. Wipe off some excess. Rusty crank bolts too. Bottom bracket spindle is pretty dirty on this side, so I'm just gonna give it a quick floss. And while I'm back there, I noticed the kickstand. So I just tighten that down. Okay, rear shifting. It's perfect, and I expected it to be. Now the front one I know needs a little bit of help. So we're in the middle here. I'm gonna shift down into first and it's not dropping. So first thing I check is, I'm gonna check the cable tension, which seems really tight. Um, so I'm gonna loosen the cable and see what happens. Anchor bolts down over here. Yeah, it relaxed a lot. Looks like it was just a tight cable. Okay. So there's a little bit of slack to it. So I'm gonna shift all the way up into the low gear and back. And I'm looking for rubbing on the inside of the K 
cage here. There's not a lot of nothing really, but I'm going to back off the low limit screw just a bit. So their derailleur is going to relax in towards the frame. Just give a little bit more clearance for that chain so it's not rubbing. Okay. So you can see there, it's pushing the chain but not shifting it. Okay, and it looks like the derailleur is just not quite parallel. So I'm gonna loosen the clamp, just the angle. I mean, a fraction of a degree, maybe. I don't know if that's gonna make much difference. Yeah, see now it's not, it's not dropping down into the low. So back that limit off. I'm working the barrel adjuster on the shifter now. I, I just loosened the cable. So, you know, this derailleur looks like it's really high too. So that's something we can look at. You can see this gap here could be closed a smidge. Not a lot though. I don't know. I think I might be splitting hairs, but um, so to do that, loosen your cable, then loosen your derailleur clamp. And then, you know, on a bike this old, that clamp has been digging into that paint for a long time and it's made its home. So it's really hard to get a micro adjustment here. I don't know if I changed anything, but I can't go a whole lot lower than that. I think I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, here's the barrel adjuster on the shifter. I'm gonna back it out like two turns. Eh, maybe three. Okay, and now I'm gonna cinch up the anchor bolt. Okay, so the anchor bolt's back here. So it's really loose. Okay, the best thing to do, grab a needle nose pliers from behind like that. Okay, now you don't want to pull like that because you're actually activating the derailleur. You just want to pull straight down. Then tighten your anchor bolt down. Get that so it's not hitting anything. Okay, so that's a tight cable. Now we started with three cranks on that, uh, what you call it, barrel adjuster on the shifter. So if we need to loosen it, we can loosen it three turns. All right, so we got lots of room, lots of clearance in the low gear. Okay, it's still hesitating to shift up. So maybe we have too much clearance there. I'm gonna turn the low limit screw in and then bring up the slack on the shifter. Oh, that's really working pretty well there. And I'm doing all this with the chain in the biggest cog, the lowest gear back there. Yeah, look at that, man. I mean, I think I explained to you what I did there. Well, now it's hesitating a little. So now I'm gonna shift the chain all the way down into the high gear, little cog. And you can see the chain is rubbing there a little bit. So I'm just pulling out on the derailleur and then with my right hand, I took up a bit of the slack and tightened the cable a bit. Okay, so we're, we're rubbing in the big chain ring too. So, hmm. I think I need to tighten this cable. I'm running out of room with my barrel adjuster. But now it feels like it's too tight.
front derailleur is giving me the fits, folks. Well, this might be one of those where, hey, it's accessing all the gears. So we're going to leave it. But in this big ring, it's going to rub. It just is going to rub in the high gears. I'm going to have to call it good enough. I don't know what else to do. So this front brake feels really great. Drop some lube on the pivot and then work it in. Tighten the cable a bit. I really like the T-handle Allen keys for this. I'm gonna tighten the rear one here quick. Just to get them feeling about the same. Yeah, they're feeling the same. One thing is, is this, the angle of this uh, handlebar here just kind of bothers me. Um, I just think it needs to be tilted forward a bit to be right. Always a good idea to double check your seat clamp. Yeah, so this seat is slid way forward, or way backward, I mean, which is usually indicative of a loose seat clamp, and it was. Check my crank bolts. I'm gonna put a drop of lube in these bottle screw heads. And up here in the, I mean anywhere really. Anywhere that water can kinda sit. It's always a good idea to put a drop of tri-flow in there to keep rust at bay. Keeps things looking nice. Nicer, at least. I mean, for a thrift shop bicycle, I think this guy did pretty well. I'm gonna flip that around, the rear um, reflector. I think that's upside down. And when I do that, I'm gonna grease the seat post. Okay. Always a good idea to drop a little lube there. It's always a good idea to check the seat post first thing too, and I didn't do that, so. Take the seat post out. Put a bunch of grease down there in the seat tube. Okay. Like so. Just 
just a little persnickety thing. Well, there you have it, bike farmers. This bike was totally rescuable and was totally worth it. And I did find a little sticker here that says 35 bucks. So he uh, um, spent 35 bucks on it and then he's gonna pay me 100 bucks for the tune-up. And his bike is good as new. Um, you know, I mean, it's certainly as good as something I would have sold you know used for probably two or 250 so um good job on that guy this one was a win sometimes it works out if uh, especially if you know a little bit about what you're looking for with these used bikes you know if you can tell the difference between a department store bike and a bike shop bike you know one of the first things to look for is a bike shop sticker when you find a bike shop sticker you know you're getting something of decent quality and then as your skills as a mechanic um, improve you can kind of take a look at things and know how much work it's going to take or if you have to replace any parts if you don't have to replace any parts then it's just lube and a little bit of time and you got yourself a perfectly good bike uh, easily flippable you can always make money on these things so um, pretty satisfying little project nice little surprise today in the off season to make a few bucks and earn a little bit of taco money and uh, yeah if you liked this video and want to see more uh, please 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 hit that subscribe button and notifications i'm trying to get two videos a week out um, sometimes a little more sometimes it's a little less depending um, in the off season here um, i've always got bike farming projects to do um, but uh, sometimes that leads to a new workbench and uh, yeah this seems to have worked out pretty well with the cameras and the lighting i think i've got a nice little system here um, and uh, yeah, this will be my new Bike Farmer Studio too. So thanks again for tuning in. Like, subscribe, notifications. I will see you next time.